Hey everyone, today we're on campus here at McGill University in Montreal. And in fact, McGill University is one of Canada's most well-known and respected institutes of higher learning. It is in fact affiliated with four different teaching hospitals and graduates over 1,000 healthcare professionals every single year. Now today's subject matter is invasive species research. And we're talking to Mr. Dixon Wong, a biology undergraduate, in fact, who does invasive species research, and is going to answer or provide us with some information on how important a subject that is. In fact, we as aquarists and hobbyists should be aware of the environment and how our actions may impact it. So to that end, let's go into the beautiful Red Path Museum and meet Dixon and talk about invasive species. You. Hi Tom, thank you for coming. Great. Now Dixon, um, why don't you give us a little bit of background on your research and a little bit on the Red Path Museum here and what you do. Okay. Um, I'm originally from BC. Uh, in my undergrad I worked with Isabel Cote um, who does a lot of research on impacts of the lionfish invasion as well as European green crab invasion. Nowadays, I'm doing my master's here in the Red Path Museum, home of like five or six different research groups. I'm supervised by Anthony Ricciardi. Our lab primarily focuses on understanding the cause and consequences of these biological invasions. Um, my research looks into the round goby, an invasive species in the St. Lawrence, and how their feeding behavior can change um, as the environment becomes less suitable for them. Very interesting. So what constitutes an invasive species? Well, an invasive species is a plant or animal that's highly prolific and is established in an area that they did not evolve in. Um, depending on who you ask, uh, it may or may not have to, do, have to have a high impact on the environment, but in the scientific sense, um, an invader does not have to have a conspicuous impact. Can you share an example with us? Uh, yeah, for sure. So for example, a dandelion is highly prolific. It's everywhere. Uh, you can find them in yards all over North America. Um, but they do not have a conspicuous impact on the environment. They're just kind of there in your yard. So aquatically, uh, with regards to invasive species, how bad is the situation in North America? Well, freshwater ecosystems are one of the most invaded in the world. Um, and the St. Lawrence Great Lakes region is no exception. Mm -hmm. um, in a study in 2005 by a group of researchers, uh, they found that um, there are uh, over 100 species of ornamental fish in, this, uh, in the region, um, that's been, in North America, that's been introduced, with around 40 that have self-reproducing self populations. Um, most of this is due to uh, hobbyists that have let go of unwanted uh, pets or through um, escape escapees in um, culture facilities. There are other ways for moving invasive species around as well, including stuff such as recreational boats and transport. Good point. Uh, in fact, I can think of uh, inter-ocean uh, inter freight and trade and the introduction of zebra mussels in the Great Lakes. That in fact uh, was quite a serious invasive species introduction into Canada. Mm -hmm, I agree and that's part of the reason why we're helping put this video together in the first place is to help arm consumers with the knowledge they need to make an informed decision on their pet choices. Um, do your research before you buy your pets. Uh, how, keep in mind how big do they get, what size of tank do they need, um, what kind of tank mates they can go with, uh, and how long they live for. And if you can't meet those requirements, you probably should not be buying that pet. Um, or making choices that make sense for you. In other words, as mm -hmm. you correctly say, uh, you know, do the research for sure. And if there is a situation which you're not in control of, and you have to, uh, you know, 
give up your fish, for example. Uh, there are humane ways to do it. You can go see your local fish retailer. You can actually do a little bit of research amongst your own friends, give them your setup, inform them how to look after the fish properly. Uh, there are a lot of options you have. There are free advertising services these days online where you can give away a setup and uh, invite somebody responsible to keep the fish for you in your absence or your departure as it may be. These things do happen. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I totally understand that. Yeah. Just one last point. Um, please don't flush our fish, don't release them. Um, all of those things, even one fish, can contribute to the uh, chances of an invasion happening. Um, and that's what we want to prevent. Before we let you go, any other words of wisdom or advice you'd like to share with us? Um, yeah, so that really back to my research. If you're in the Ontario, Quebec area, um, and you happen to catch a round goby, you can identify them by their chubby cheeks. Uh, they have a black spot on their pectoral fin, as well as a fused uh, a pelvic disc. Um, please just remove them from the wild and um, just don't put them back. Thanks a lot, Dixon. And uh, we want to, on behalf of Fluval, uh, thank McGill University and yourself, of course, for having contacted us and suggested, uh, you know, we look at uh, and consider this type of thing. It's very important. Mm -hmm. It was great. We really learned a lot today. Mm -hmm. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.